Sega CEO Satomi uh, admits we've lost trust. I am reading this directly from TSSZ. Um, an interview with Famitsu translated, translated uh, ha Hajime Satomi conceded some of the company's releases over the past decade have ended it eroded trust with long-time fans. Um, reading the bold part of this, not going to read the entire thing of it, is yeah. looking back, there have been some titles that have partially betrayed that trust in the past 10 years. So, let's say it's 2015 between 2005 and today. I can only think of at least five games that have betrayed, so to say, speak. Yeah. Shadow the Hedgehog wasn't what we, I know, well, no, I, I know the intention behind it, but it wasn't something we particularly wanted. His own game, sure, but not like that. Sonic 06 was supposed to be a, re a soft reboot to the franchise. I'm not including Sonic Unleashed because I actually fucking like that game. Yes. <laughs> yeah. Sonic, Free, Sonic Free Riders, a connect only game which doesn't work. Mm. Uh, Sonic Lost World was supposed to be the big new game since Generations was that big. Like, even critics liked it, surprisingly. Well, hit, it, was it, like... it was the hit they Sega needed since Sonic yeah. 2. Yeah, it's the it's a typical thing. Most reviewers just say, "Oh, a good Sonic game in the last ten years." It's like mm -hmm, yeah, with, the, with, the, with the dripping sarcasm they always have, bastards. Yeah, the, they always yeah. do. And <laughs> Sonic Boom Rise of Lyric, mm. which is I guess a half and half, considering it wasn't meant to be a Sonic game, it wasn't meant to be on the Wii U, and they basically kind of forced them onto it's... it. Mm. So plus, it's a licensed game. Because I consider it, I, I consider it as such as a separate universe. It is, yeah. So, but still, it was a Sega produced product. Yeah, I think really this is not. To, I think this hasn't come out because of really two things. One, of course, what's happened with Boom, and also in Sega in general. Because obviously, the last few years, there's been within, within the past past this year alone. Yeah. Just this year, in the first quarter, there have been um, the re the rebuilding of Sega America, and a lot of people got laid off. Yeah, there's been that. There's been certain games that oh, we can't. They're in Japanese, but not coming to European market or Fancy West Star on Fancy Star Online Two. Yeah, there was Aliens: Colony Marines. That one is that failed. That was that was years ago, but still. I know, but that's but still a bug. I'm thing. Then it, I, mean, I just listed the Sonic games that feel betrayed because that's basically what everyone thinks for Sega. Sega, Sonic, that's it. Yeah. But then again, you have to think, like you said, you're thinking of the other games. You mean Aliens from the Rings wasn't great. Mm. Bayonetta 2 was a Wii U exclusive and that got a lot of flack for it. Yeah. It's a it's great true. game, but it got a lot of flack for being an exclusive. I think, and you like know, I said, there was Company of Heroes 2, which was, wasn't even a Sega product. It They bought the um, company. Mm. And like I said, I mean, a lot of it is down to, obviously, it's partly due to Sonic, but it is down to people's view of Sega, as in, it, it was like, it's the typical thing. Of, it, it was, was, it, it was it, a juggernaut. In the 90s, it was a juggernaut in gaming, the only company to actually go one-to-one -one with Nintendo. Yeah. And that's its legacy, and right now, they don't have that legacy since they had the, that the game deal with Nintendo. Yeah, and now and they're making games for Nintendo with Nintendo characters. Mm. So... As far as breaking trust, I think it's 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 really weird. I mean, for me, it's just down to do I want to play that game that happens to be under Sega's label, really? Pretty much, yeah. Like um, there was also the case as well with the Shining games, the whole fiasco where. Anything including the Shining Force, Shining in the Darkness, or anything of the Shining franchise ah. was pulled from YouTube. Mm. Making having a bunch all the videos were, were pulled, demonetized, and a lot of channels were pulled down, including Total Biscuit, who still is boycotting the boycotting that Sega because Sega has not issued an apology. Mm. And the only instance he's mentioned a Sega game of recent, I think, was Generations when it was on Steam sale, right. and and a and as not to Aliens Isolation. Yeah, that's I mean, it. Other than that, Total Biscuit is is completely boycotted the Frank boycotted the franchise. This basically. company because he did not receive an apology from Sega because of the Shining incident. Yeah. 
But then, it, but it is funny because this statement coming out. I mean, how many times have you had like big studios basically saying we're sorry? So this is the first time Sega's ever done it. I yeah. mean, internally they have said let's do something about this. And last time we had this was Sonic Unleashed, where they completely revamped everything. Mm. Well, I mean, not, not completely everything, but it's like let's take another direction. And because of that, we got Gen- Unleashed Colors and Generations, probably the best trilogy of 3D Sonic games yeah. ever. Yeah. I mean, again, it's just this whole thing of the idea of, because it's funny because with this, we've obviously got the whole Konami and EA thing, which you think. Konami, you know, Konami is completely bullshit right now. The Sonic Power Battle, it just wants to be mobile and gambling, and it's no longer interested in video games. Yeah, Capcom yeah. does not give a shit about one of their lo- local franchises, uh, yeah, although, it's, it's still, it's, although it's trying to say, no, we still care, we still care. Yeah, give us a legacy collection of all these six of the Mega Man, classic Mega Man games on there, oh, the $15? Yeah, that's great, Capcom. What about 7, 8, 9, and 10? Mm. What about the X collection? Oh, we want to do an X, or is it an X9? That'll be great, or revamp Legends 3. So what they say we got Kenji, Kenji Inafune yeah. going off to make Mighty Number no. no. Nine, and the team behind Legends has now gone off to develop a game called Red Ash. <laughs> I am not kidding. Yeah, and also back to Konami, I can't remember the guy's name. Uh, the he, guy who's responsible for uh, Castle, Castlevania, Castlevania. He's now doing Bloodstained. Mm. I mean, at the minute we know Kojima. Well, at the minute the game's MGS Five has been finished, but God knows what he's going to do next after this. Yeah. Also going into this, this um, apology, mm. uh, as far as the Western market goes, we learn a lot from Atlas. If we can make a title with proper quality, I believe there's a good chance it'll do well for the, even in the West for players that like to play Japanese games. Mm. Yes, and Atlas was bought by Sega, I think, earlier this year or last year, mm. and they can learn a lot because Atlas puts out some of the cult classics of RPGs and or game, video games in general. Mm. So they can learn a lot from that company. It's just as of right now, it's still a bad decision because of Sonic Boom. It's a license that didn't. It's going very well because of the TV show. Yeah, I mean that's insane. But, but other than that, everyone who who thinks of Sega or thinks of Sonic goes direct to Sonic Boom and Rise of Olympic, That one game. It's it based. Is, it is now the Sonic 06. It's going to be that joke. I know. I was literally going to say, you know. At this point, we've had the obviously Unleashed Colors generation and also Lost, Lost World was mediocre. It wasn't great, but it wasn't terrible. It, no, no, had, it, saying... had, it had ideas, but it wasn't perfected. No, no, no the I'm game saying... could do something. I'm not saying that. I'm saying in general, it's like after the last yeah. few years, we've seen a much gradual quality wise in the Sonic games. Yeah. And generally, we had, we had an increase. Yeah. But I think because of that, they thought, okay, let's try something new for this new generation, this new generation of consoles. And then that quality started to sink again. Yeah, I think because of, I think this apology and actually admitting that they'd be betraying fans' trust, rather than saying, "Do you know what? Our game so we apologize." Then a year later, they release a bunch of cr- release another bunch of crap. Uh, um, example: Battlefield Four. They and, <laughs> and, but, and honestly, Dice can make great games. Okay, Dice can make excellent games. They make Mirror's Edge. That is for not, that was actually a great game. Hmm. But the, pro- the problem is that they also made Battlefield, the Battlefield series. And hmm. Battlefield 4 is that it was completely broken on launch. Hmm. There were bugs, there were the lobby issues, the servers, it was just a mess. Yeah. And they had to hold everything on their DLC just to fix the main game. Hmm. And I can't remember what other game it was. No, Batman Arkham Origins. Warner oh, Bros. Yeah. The game was broken. There was purple glitches. Just a complete mess. Yeah. Warner Bros. Games said they couldn't fix the core game because they wanted to focus on the DLC. This is this is the problem, though. It's just, at the end of the day, I think this is why people blame Sega a lot because again, they're the bosses saying you have to get this done by this time. You have this money. We, we're promoting it. We got to do this. We got to do this faster and shorter. And I've heard, bizarrely enough, I've heard this a lot from developers I met. I've met people who've been in gaming. I've even met the guys at. Um, uh, create assembly actually and ask them what was the relationship with Sega and it's funny with that they were very hands off with them they were basically saying just make your game in fact some people may remember that originally Isolation was going to be a third person game mm. and, and they were the ones thinking actually we could make you know it's kind of okay but I think it worked better if it was first person Sega went okay do that 
So there is this whole thing of, again, I think... Say, we, say it's not exactly, you know, pull it, out, pull it out for Christmas, pull it out for Christmas, pull it out for Christmas every single year. No. EA, Activision, Ubisoft, Konami, Capcom, they all do this just to get the rush. Sega's, they probably want, Sega still does that. Yeah. But it's still, like, one of, not one every year, but like every two years or so. So there's yeah. a, like, there was a big gap between their major releases, and even then, they are maybe the household company, but in-house there's several other developers making the games. Mm. And even licensed ones such as Platinum Games, Sumo Digital, mm. like you said, Creative Assembly as well. Yeah. Although I think they are, I think they actually are an in-house Creative Assembly. I think they are, but they, again, do, it's they, like, they make the, the Total War series. I know, but they are kind of like, over, I did say, like, are they like coming in every week to see what you're doing? And for the most part, they were like just doing the game, and then they would come in and just check how they were rather than just eyeballing everything. Hmm. And and again, the big problem is is that really, I think what most people are angry at, it's not Sega themselves, not the creative people of Sega. It's not like we're going, oh, f oh fuck, Tashi Yukaza. It's like, no, we're not saying stupid things like that. It, we're blaming like the businessmen, the sort of men in suits or the, you know, the, the accounts. The ones that only care about making a profit rather than actually making sure to put out a good product. Yeah. I'll tell you this story. Actually, this is a good story because to do with Team 17 is a good story, is many years ago they worked on the Legend Shoot Larry game, which was, at the time, it was going to be a very big game. It was Team 17's first time doing an is event. It, is this a uh, box office bust? Yes, this is okay. the one. Box office so this is So, I'm telling this for people who haven't heard it. Hmm. Um, so they were working on this game, which was a very big title. You know, they're using the Unreal Engine for the first time, so they were doing a lot of things, you know, big environments, lots of characters, you know, vehicle sections, you're going into different film sets and stuff. And... At this time, they were getting the game ready, and then this was, and later on, sorry. But then, unfortunately, Sierra went into the whole Activision deal with Blizzard, and that all happened. And Team 17 were told when the game was at a point where it was playable, I would say alpha, not beta, because beta, beta is beta. No, alpha, then beta. All right. It was in alpha stage, so it was playable. So it was definitely playable. You could turn the game on and all that stuff. But they were told to shelve it. And that essentially means you can't... It's like, you've got to stop working on this. It's like, but this, this thing's still wrong with it. We, we can't... No, it's like, sorry, you have to... Sorry, this whole deal's... On, you've got to have to just put your hands off it for now. So essentially, they know they had a crap... They had a game that wasn't finished. It's like, oh, God. So for them, it's that whole thing of... You were told by the businessman to say, you've got to keep this up because of bloody this or bloody that. And I think it's that whole idea of... You yeah, think there, have been, there, have been games that, they, that, there have been games that have been released where it has been a known issue. Yeah. I think I, it was a term, I think it is a known issue or a known, a known problem game where they actually do put it out, mm. but don't bother with anything else with it. Yeah, but I think it's that whole thing of people focus on the short-term things. It's always, we've got to do this. The short-term thing is the most important rather than the long-term thing. It's the one thing, if, if you can get it done, then that's finished. But then you don't know what the outcome is going to be, because once it's out there to the public, it's a different story. Assassin's Creed Unity, for example, that's another game that was, sh was shipped out, especially on PC, and Ubisoft is not known for PC ports. Mm. They have shut out bad PC ports, and even on console, Unity was a mess. <laughs> mm. So... Taken away from this, Sega actually publicly apologizing. Mm. And not just like saying, we're sorry for the Boom franchise or we're sorry for Aliens, who even then it's like, we just published it, get Gearbox developed it. And Again, that's and, the and whole thing. Saying, and that's another, that's another, another can of worms that want to open. Who to, to blame who, whatever. I think my um, joke review was just saying, fuck it, was yeah. just, is, it just says it all. But at the end, of, at the end of the day, is basically admitting you've done something wrong is the first step to doing something right. Yeah, the thing is, though, I think this is the first time Sega has done this mm. within since I think I think just before Unleashed, but not as vast as this. No, I mean Unleashed. I mean when Unleashed was announced, it was basically saying, "Look, you remember." Look, you know that our anniversary game sucked. We're sorry for that. We really are, but pr we promise we'll get better. It may take us time. It may, maybe not in this game, maybe in the next game, but we promise you we will make a better game. Mm. And they have. I mean, that just proves that at least they can learn lessons. I mean, people always so, like Sega to say... can put out quality products. Yeah. Just not as heavy-handed. If they're going to take a while to get out, 
then delay them. Mm. Just don't delay them just for no reason. Delay them to polish. Mm. You look that happened with Night's nice Journey of Dreams. That will delay, but at the end of the end of the day, it still had problems. Yeah, and but that's less and of it, a. And then again, I do prefer it over into Dreams anyway. I uh, just crucified cruci- cruci- myself then. So I was going to say that. <laughs> I don't give a fuck. <laughs> Mm. The point is, is that you have to remember Sega essentially only has really three big, t- you know, essentially if you think about what were yeah. the games to release every what, year, what, Sonic, get, Football. They, they have football. four main titles, and fourth one I'm not too sure they do keep it as a main title. Yeah. And you have Sonic, Football Manager, and Total War. Yeah. And Fancy, Fancy Star, a bit. Yeah, a bit. Yeah. That's just it. Mm. No, but other than that, they're not all developed by Sega. No. Then... There's also the other in-house games, such as uh, what, like you got Hardlight with your Sega games. You got Crypt of Crypt of Assembly is a Blade. Metal War series. Mm-hmm. It now there's also Atlas, and their key is quality. Mm-hmm. And like I said before earlier, hopefully Sega will take this too hard this time. Mm-hmm. Just look at the little black cold thing that they have have in the business suits. Mm-hmm. And actually do something about this. That's I mean, why again, we we'll just the thing at the end of the day, and this and I'm saying this directly to Sega, we want good games. Look back to the nineties and see what was the what was your motive, what was the quality assurance that you had? Mm. Instead of just pushing stuff out just to make a buck. Mm. It's not you have one of the biggest fan bases in the world next to Nintendo and Square. Mm. I'm not, not including Blizzard because that, That's I'm, I'm, I'm just going console right now. Yeah. So, ten past 10 years, you had have quality products that people wanted. Mm. Look at the good, take away the bad, and fix what is broken rather than trying to re- reinvent the wheel. Mm. And if so, Fix what you try to reinvent. Lost mm. World is a good start. Just fix it. That's mm. all we can say for Sonic Lost World. Sonic Boom, it can go places if you give them time to do it and not just sit and not just push them, push it onto them with less than a year to develop. Yeah. The rest of the franchises, I'm not too sure. I'm not that big in I'm not that big on I'm not a football fan. I'm not, I'm not, I'm not an RTS fan. It is difficult. I think part of the reason is if they do try, because, again, in the past they have tried to bring back certain games. They've tried Alt of Beast, Golden Axe, and Todd and Earl. And people just yeah, sort of... They out, out. But they outsourced them to other companies that have no idea what they are. Hmm. Todd and Earl was a complete wreck and tried to be hit with the kids in well, early no, 2000s. No, no, actually, actually, funny enough, Todd and Earl 3... The story is basically that they wanted to, I mean, it was meant to be in Dreamcast, and then they planned it for PS2, then it was, then they made a deal with Microsoft to make an Xbox exclusive, and they had to do changes like, you can't op, you can't go to certain levels, they see you do certain things online, blah blah blah, and all that stuff. But again, it's, it's one the, of the... At the end of the day, it wasn't great. It yeah. really wasn't a good game. What else? There was the Golden Axe Beast Rider. I don't think anyone actually played Golden Axe. I think they just looked at the characters and thought, we can make a game out of this. I just thought, is this Golden Axe? <laughs> it wasn't Golden Axe. I know, I was just saying. And plus, they still have their own IP. They own the Mad World, there was gonna Bayonetta, be- Vanquish, and Infinite Space. Be- developed by Platinum Games, sure, but it's Sega's IP. Hmm. You look on that Bayonetta 2 case, it's their Sega. Hmm. I will say this, is in recently, um, at Recently, in terms of the community-wise, um, Aaron Webber, who was part of Sega, then left, now he's back now. Partly because they felt like we're in a bit of a shithole, so we need you to help us. And i got to admit, the guy is, um, you know, at least in terms of people's reaction to Sega, and particularly certain, you know, half the bad side of Sonic fans. We know who they are. It's we nice know to see... where you live. Yeah. <laughs> it's nice to see that, A, he understands about this. He does know about this stuff. It's not like they're completely ignorant about all the crap that's happened. He knows about it. And mm-hmm. recently, if you've been seeing on the Twitter and Facebook, he's been having some little fun, just interjecting humor and saying, you know, we will hopefully get better. We've known we've done bad, but trust us, there's good people here and we can do better. We, pro- we promise you we are going to get better at this. 